Welcome everyone to the V3 implementation call. Today is November 9th. And uh, if you have not already done so, please update your name with your, affili uh, with your affiliation in the participant list. I uh, want to let you know that these meetings are recorded and shared on the NEMSIS website and the YouTube channel. Uh, feel free to share with your team or review as needed. Uh, these calls are a conversation. We encourage your participation. Uh, please come off of mute or use the chat feature. Uh, we review all the chat during our post-meeting debrief. And let's get started today with the maintenance update by Laurel Bader. All right, good morning, everyone. So this is gonna be really quick. There's no maintenance scheduled for November. Um, so there might we might come up with something later, something urgent comes up, but at this time, we're not planning any maintenance. So you shouldn't notice any interruptions. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna um, roll right into my next topic, which is the help desk demo. Um, Chris, can I share my screen? Thank yes. you. There you go. All right. So hopefully you all see the NEMSIS website. Um, so I know we talked about this once already, but we're just gonna demo it once more. We are um, we have this cool new help desk that's now available uh, for everyone to use. And the way that you can find that is if you go to any page of the NEMSIS website and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a big red submit a help desk ticket button. And that'll take you to our help desk. But if you say want to go there a different way, you can go there from our support page. So if you click on support, you'll now find a big red Nemsys TAC help desk button. And if you click either of these buttons, this one or this one, they both take you to the same page, which is our Nemsys help desk, where you can get all sorts of services depending on you know what your question is. So let's say that you're a researcher and you have a question. You can click here and you can send in your question, or you can request a, a data set or something like that. So I'm just gonna have a question, general request for support. Why is Nemsys data so big? And then I can hit send and I'll receive an email and someone will follow up with me and I'll get updates on that via email. You can go ahead and send that in. And there's my request. As soon as someone gets back to me, it'll probably be updated and I'll get a get an update in my email. Um, so the reason why this help desk is super great is because it allows us to work with you faster and more efficiently. <clears throat> you don't have to wait for Laurel to respond if Laurel's out sick during flu season. Jen can see your ticket and she could and she might be able to pick it up. Um, this allows us all to uh, work better to provide you guys the best service. Um, we are still doing a few things on the website, though. Compliance testing applications are still that longer form on the website. So you'll want to go there um, if you need to apply for compliance. But anything else, um, I would highly, highly recommend this super cool help desk. Does anyone have questions about the Nemsys help desk? All right. Yep. Well, if you do have questions about the NIPS help desk, you can always open a help desk ticket or send us an email if you have our email. Um, and of course, if you think of anything during this meeting, feel free to put it in the chat. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Laurel. Have been uh, I've been interacting with users with the uh, ticket system, and it has been working out really well. So, um, yeah, really happy to to see that implemented, and uh, hopefully, people get a chance to use it. Um, thank you for the demonstration there, and thanks, Julianne, for adding a link into the chat if anyone wants to check that out while you ponder the question that Laurel has put forth to us, which is why is Nemesis so big? So, wondered that myself. Um, while you ponder that, we're going to turn the time over to uh, Jen Korea, who is going to talk to us about compliance testing, which was mentioned before. Jen, go ahead. Good morning. Um, it's just a really quick announcement, just a reminder about um, checking and making sure that your software status is up to date and ready to go. And uh, this is where you find your status if you're 
um, unsure where to look, you go to the NEMSIS homepage, technical resources, compliance software testing status. And notice that for here, you do have to switch between 3.4 and 3.5 to make sure you're on the right version when you're looking. At the top, receive and process. Down below, collect and send. And then at the bottom, which is the same on both for 3.4 and 3.5, would be anyone who is entered into initial compliance testing um, for their software company. So please, um, as we roll toward the end of the year, I know um, sometimes there is a, a large rush to the gate and we're gonna try and hopefully keep that to a minimum this year. So uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out, use that fancy new help desk that Laurel just displayed for everyone. And we look forward to working with you. And that's all I have, Chris. Wonderful. Thanks, Jen. Um, yeah, so uh, next on our agenda, we have an ET3 update from John Beckett. John, are you here with us? The joke with uh, Zoom meetings nowadays is always feels like a seance. John, are you with us? I don't see John on the participant okay. list yet, so let's come back. Let's come okay. back, to John. No problem. Then we will. Uh, we'll come back to John, and uh, for now, we will talk uh, about state and national resources with Laurie Lundy. Hello, everyone. Um, good to see you today. I was going to just touch on briefly where to find state and national resources on our website. I know this is something that we email out weekly. And we email out typically any updates that have happened within the last week. But if you're interested in finding updates that have happened previous to that in the past month, um, I wanted to show you that. And then let me explain the process a little bit as well and how that'll change from version 3.4 to 3.5. So currently, as states are updating their state data set or their schematron um, or schematron rules, they send that typically to Jen Korea, or some of you sent it to me and I forward it to Jen, and she will will post it on your state page. Um, once we transition to, or once your state transitions to version 3.5, that will happen through your software vendor. And that will happen um, automatically. It'll be updated to web services. So you will no longer need to email that in, um, which we hope will be a smoother, cleaner, easier process for you. But you still will be able to find those resources. Um, you can find them a few different ways. Here's our homepage. And if you scroll down and click on your state, um, I'll click on Texas here. And then um, you probably have seen this before, but there's there's um, posted here. It'll tell you the date that it's last been updated. And if you click on the red rectangle, it'll take you to a, a web version of your state data set. If you click on the download button, you can download it as well. But you can find here your state data set and your schematron rules. And then um, down below, there's also a history implementation tool update history, and it shows you what has changed recently for your state. Um, if you scroll down to the bottom of this state page, you can see there's a link here. It says return to the V3 map. And from this map, if you scroll down below it, you can find um, your state, and there's a list of the version of the National Schematron that you're using and when it was last updated. And if you keep scrolling on the bottom of this page is where recent repository changes are posted. And it looks like it defaults to the last month. So here you can see the last month of um, updates and changes. And I know this is really helpful for software vendors to come to and, and find any states you're working with and what's been updated if they've updated their um, agencies or facilities lists. And then you also can reset this if you don't want to look at the month view. Um, you can click here and just look at the, um, the week view of what has happened in the last week. And this is what gets emailed out regularly. Any questions on that? State or national resources or the process and how it's changing, where to find them? All right, I think that's all I had. Thank you, I'll pass it back to Chris. 
Thanks, Laurie. Great demonstration. Again, if you do come up with any questions about this, feel free to put them into the chat. Um, and uh, Julianne did put the links that Laurie was talking about in her presentation in the chat as well. So thank you for that. Uh, moving on, let's go ahead and hand the time over to uh, Clay and where he's going to be talking about tracking agency migration to Nemesis version 3.5. All right. Thank you, Chris. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. All right, fantastic. Uh, Karen Jacobson uh, last week uh, had an interesting uh, proposition that I think may help states. wanted to wanted to uh, get some uh, feedback from the states as to whether or not this might be a valuable addition to the state submission dashboard. Right. So this dashboard is found under under state reports under V three and is called the state data submission dashboard. This this is the dashboard that the states often use to use. Uh, uh, that utilized to just determine uh, who has submitted in the past 13 days, um, uh, what's the quality of those records, those kind of things. I think this is a popular dashboard. Um, Karen suggested that maybe somewhere on this dashboard, and I'll ask the states if they think this would be valuable, and then uh, the vendors, if they think there's some technical issue associated with this, uh, uh, please let us know. But somewhere on this dashboard indicates uh, the agencies that have moved to version 3.5. So um, that is part of the of the submitted XSD files. Uh, so that could be provided maybe on this tab here where we're talking about each individual um, uh, kind of the agency detail for the states. Perhaps it could be put there. Um, do states want to be able to track the number of or the percentage of agencies that have made the migration to version 3.5? I'll I'll start there. States, any 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 comments? Okay, affirmation by silence. I, I assume. Okay. All right. Um, I, vendors, uh, any concerns with us doing that? Okay, great. Again, again, uh, affirmation. Thank you. All right. I, I think I have the very next uh, uh, topic wanted to bring folks up to speed in regards to what we're doing uh, with a revision. Of, of the wireframe for the ONDCP dashboard. So this- Hey, hey Clay, I'm yeah. sorry, really quick. There was a um, a note in the chat oh, great. Um, from Caitlin at Angel Track. Is there an official chart showing every state's V35 cutover date and their cutover rules, prior trips, uploadable? Because that would be the most helpful. Oh, that's a good question. So we keep, a uh, 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 great question, Caitlin. So we, we do routinely contact states to provide us an estimated cutover date, but but I think what you're saying here, and it's and it's interesting, perhaps is um, when they actually do cut over, and prior trips still uploadable versus uploadable. Uh, three five, Caitlin. I'm not exactly sure what the what the example is. Prior trips still uploadable. Okay, so maybe um, maybe Kaylin can join. We'll um, we'll review your example here carefully. I like the idea of maybe maybe just indicating when when states actually move. Uh, that's that's indicated, I think, on the map with the color green. Anyway, we'll look we'll look more at that. And, Let's see. and Clay, oh. their plans to transition are included on the tr on the state page. So yes. the pages that Lori just showed earlier, if you scroll down onto a state page, it's if we have their um, anticipated transition time, if they've shared that with us, then we've put it on that state page. So if you scroll down right there, that's right there. Yep. Okay. Oh, if we need to re-upload trips in the old version oh okay um well i think i think caitlin and, and 
and and and again, anyone correct me if I'm not uh, completely understanding the question, but we, when a state transitions, we still collect in both versions, uh, the previous version that the state was using and then the new version that the state has moved to. Um, we do close versions. And so maybe, uh, uh, but that, thankfully has not been associated with the movement of a state to a new version. So um, I, I think the answer to your question is if they do move on December 20, we will collect data on December 21 in both version 3.4 and 3.5, so. Okay, I know the TAC does. I'm I'm asking for a, a central registry where each state can post their dates and their preference for this question. Okay, uh, uh, Kaylin, maybe we can talk a a little bit online if you if you have some availability today, just to make sure I understand your question. I've always appreciated your wisdom in regards to these issues, so I want to make sure I understand. Yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, fantastic. Thank you. Any other any other uh, thoughts or questions regarding this idea of adding some kind of an indication of the number and percentage, uh, uh, perhaps of agencies within a state that have moved to three five, or are submitting three five? All right, all right. I'll move to the next uh, topic, which is just to give an update in regards to our work to uh, socialize a revision of the ONDCP dashboard. Um, so again, uh, just a quick primer. So folks will remember this uh, last summer, uh, uh, the Office of National Drug Control Policy and its director, Dr. Gupta, sent out a letter to states requesting that there be the ability to publicly release zip code data uh, that demonstrated the burden of EMS calls in which, uh, by the definition we developed, there was a non-fatal opioid overdose. We socialized that idea with states. Uh, there was concerns about providing the data at that level of specificity. And so uh, we worked with uh, ONDCP and have really backed off a lot of the specificity, right, that's required. So we've, we've had two office hours where we have invited states to come on and, and, and to talk to us about whether or not this generalization of the I, 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 of the dashboard and the and the decrease in specificity with um, whether or not that uh, new specification would meet their needs and in in fact it's been fairly positive. Uh, we just finished our last call yesterday. There was a request uh, by states uh, uh, for asked uh, for us to ask ONDCP to update this letter, and so that it. Uh, reflects the specifications that are in this new revision of the dashboard. So we will talk to them about providing an updated letter that um, indicates that the data, no counts are released, no rates are released at the state or county levels, and that the data uh, just be a heat map that shows whether or not each county is above or below the national average. So if, you, if you've had a chance to be on those wire or, or on those uh, office hour calls, you've seen a wireframe that uh, presents that. Um, those meetings have also resulted in a request for us to answer these questions and so that uh, state data managers when taking this request back to their state or state EMS directors uh, that they'll be able to also provide this uh, hopefully just like a three-pager and so that legal or others that need to take a look at at this request to release this uh, dashboard can have quick specific answers to each of these questions. So I'm going to pause there and just ask any of the any of the states who are perusing these questions if there are others other questions that they think might be asked of them right where we could potentially um, uh, make those requests more efficient for you by adding another question. Or other questions. Are there are there any ideas or questions you think may come up by your states that aren't listed here? And I'll pause for a moment for you to kind of read through those and see if there's any if there's any additions. 
Hey, Clay, it's Mark Roberts. Hey, Is Mark. any of this duplication of OD maps? And could we better, could our time be better spent um, adding custom elements and values to support OD maps and let them um, take that, that data? Yeah, um, yeah, Mark, so, that, so that's a great question, right? There are other uh, mapping systems, uh, biospatial OD maps that are all looking at the same issue. And that was a, that was a really good question that was asked just on our last uh, call. And there was a request for us to indicate um, you, you know, how, how our definition of opioid overdose will differ from OD map or from, uh, from biospatial. I think I think ONDCP came to us, came to Eric with this request because of, of our coverage, right? All 50 states, three territories in the District of Columbia. So yeah, to answer your question, Mark, I mean, could could this data be provided to ONDCP by a different provider? I think the answer is yes, but I think there was strong interest in utilizing the data from the TAC uh, to meet this need. There will be difference in definitions, right? So there's going to be differences in rates and counts because, for example, at the national level, we don't collect narrative and and uh, and there are systems that are utilizing narrative, including state systems. So uh, I've been working with OD maps quite a bit. And I think the, the problem that we're having is, is that NEMSIS doesn't have any specific elements that relate to um, opioid and say the drug used and and just things that are very specific to them that if we would put those elements out on a national level then we could all collect at a national um, consistency because right now everybody's just kind of doing their own thing and making stuff up because there is no you know, we we all we all go back to nemesis. Well, what's the nemesis elements? Well, there aren't any. Well, then everybody kind of does their own thing. If we could come up with some nemesis elements, then we could say this field is this element, this field is this element, and we could get some consistency, even if it's first watch biospatial or OD maps. But right now, with everything being kind of whatever the state data manager happens to think is a good fit, then it's always going to be inconsistent. Yeah. Yeah, Mark. It's actually uh, it's actually a lot more complicated than that. Um. So, and Josh put it in the chats. Josh put it in the chat. Um. That basically, uh, and, and he's absolutely correct. OD map looks at what um the state or the entity submitting says is an overdose. So, they data going into OD maps is not standardized per se across the board. Um. Biospatial implemented the CSTE um, definition. The, we do not use the CST definition because we do not look at the narratives. Um, and that was discussed a lot during the development of the CSTE definition. But you really have to go back to the beginning of time for opioid tracking to realize how complicated this is. The federal government put out hundreds of millions of dollars for opioid work. It went out through multiple federal agencies, CDC, Department of Justice, um, DHS, and others. All of them, to some degree, required some sort of reporting or data collection. No one standardized that across the federal entities as states accepted millions and millions of dollars to develop their programs, everybody developed it differently because there was no specific requirement across feds. And even within some federal agencies who gave out money, there were no specific requirements. So a federal agency collecting data or reporting on opioids could be collecting data in multiple formats and in multiple, using multiple definitions. So the, the problem is very complex. Multiple people have tried to put um, multiple people have tried to put a standardized definition out there. CSTE worked with NSEMSO um, and a lot of NGOs and, and data partners to come up with with the definition. A lot of people have migrated to that. 
However, that was very late in the process. And many people had already had their program set up and said, well, that's great, but we're already doing this and it's working and we're not going to make those changes. I think, and I don't know this for certain, this is complete speculation on my part. The White House recognizes that and was looking for something to give them a baseline standard across the country. And they looked at the EMS data. They said they have it from 53, 53 states and or territories. That's our starting point. The idea was to build a baseline with the data standard that they knew existed, that they felt comfortable reporting in a way that, that um, they could look at a national picture and then drill down in detail from there as they get the big picture. That's why the request went to the states for the county and the zip code level data so that they would have some sort of standard across all entities. That is a very high level explanation of, of historically what's happened um, with this. We're seeing and you know, we're seeing the same thing now with like pediatric um, with RSV. So a lot of people are very interested in capturing data, work with HRSA to give them the data that they're looking for. The problem is in the pediatric group, and all of you know this from working with peds, great and wonderful people, huge and wonderful intentions, but everybody defines a pediatric patient differently. And they wanna look at different age groups and you end up with the, the same basic thing, which is why HRSA is reaching out saying, okay, give us this national picture first, and then we'll begin to look at this city by city, or we'll look at this state by state and so on. Um, the traffic records thing, just to, to kind of beat the dead horse one more time, even within NHTSA and the NHTSA regions, there's not always specific definitions and specific data elements for traffic um, data. Even though there were um, standards like um, FARS, and muck and muck um, people were given money to develop these. They, they were always allowed to add in, you know, and, and I get it, uh, um, states rights, you guys can develop your, your own versions of things, but in doing so, um, you, have the, you have all these different variations out there. So in this case, I, I will, we've worked with OD maps, um, Biospatial's worked with OD maps, several other vendors have as well to provide them with the data. But there's some challenges on the OD map side to, to making changes to that product um, that we've talked with them about. And then there's some challenges with what states report. And we're seeing that more and more with this White House project. So it's, it's interesting. I, I love the concept of standardization and I would eliminate as much variation as possible if I were king for the day. But until until we get EMS thinking of thinking of systems in terms of regions and, and nationally and not focused on urban areas or focused on specific geographical boundaries, whether that's counties or states, we're going to have this variation. We just need to find a way to deal with it. And I, I believe that's why the focus on the White House is what it is for this particular project. And I think now the desire is once they have this first pass is to start to drill down more detailed and work with the states individually, whether that's through the governor's offices, whether that's through the state EMS offices, I think that remains to be seen to get more specificity. Climate control office is right behind that. We're developing very similar things for them. They love what they're seeing. They have, a, they have a baseline standard that they don't have currently. And then they're going to take that to the states and take that through their, uh, through their communications team to get it more detailed. And that's when it comes to you folks. But uh, I think this is the attempt to standardize it. Um, even though we know we can get more specificity, God knows I've been telling the NHTSA folks and the transportation people, Here's this transportation by the numbers project. Here, here's the baseline of what we can look at nationally. But if you work with your state EMS offices, if you contact them directly, they can give you far greater specificity, far more detailed information than we take at the national data set. And that's our attempt at standardizing it. 
So I hope that helps. But uh, if you have questions, please let me know. Thanks, Eric. Um, just one thing I'd like to add is, I mean, I'm getting three to five calls or emails a week on OD maps and the reporting of OD maps and the inconsistencies between the way that everybody is submitting data. It, it sure would help if, if on the custom data element side, at least we could all come up with elements that match something that we could all tie back to, um, opposed to just doing everything kind of haphazard based upon, um, you know, based based upon the way the wind is blowing that day. I, I feel that with as many vendors as we have in California, for example, and as many agencies as we have in California, just as an example, again, to be able to say, use these elements, use these values would help us at least get some consistency. But right now we don't have it because we have 20 different vendors in the state. So thanks so much, Eric. I do appreciate it. No, no problem. Let, let us let us think about that um, for our next call. We'll, we'll make that one of our agenda topics. I think the recommendation is to go the CSTE route. It would be my recommendation. Um, the, the only variation, and I apologize for the background phone call here. The only variation would be um, the only variation would be is if you're. Um, system allows you to to look at a narrative and there was a lot of discussion about the narrative piece and i understand that it can give you um additional specificity other folks think it can give you additional problems so can uh we can discuss that but certainly the data elements that they that they selected and the definitions that they used I, I think would be my starting point since it was an assembly backed in project and uh there seems to be a lot of people following that particular definition at this point. Yeah, and Eric's correct. At the NEMSIS level, we follow CSTE as closely as we can based on the data that we receive at the national level. Great question, Mark, thank you. Um, are there questions about this effort or are there uh, folks have probably had time to review these questions. Any additional FAQs that we should develop uh, just in the next little while to get those out to states? All right. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Chris. I'll turn it back over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thanks for the lively discussion there. Uh, always great. For our next discussion topic here, I want to put it back over to Eric. Is there any items uh, from the Office of EMS? I have no specific items for the Office of EMS other than to say we're putting together, and we'll be talking more about this with the data managers at their next call, we're putting together a, a list of our conferences and things for next year, uh, for 2023. If you would like us... Um, if you would like us to, um, um, if you would like us to uh, participate at your conference or meetings, have representations from the Nemesis TAC there, um, by all means, um, I would be happy to put that on our schedule. If you would um, also be interested in speaking um, at some of the conferences that we are asked to speak at. Uh, we can't highlight any one particular product. We have to be careful with that, but with um, with our presentations. But if you want to be able to present on, for example, transportation data, transportation work, and things like that that you're doing, um, please let us know. We are looking to add speakers to like pre-conference sessions and things that we've submitted for for this year. And uh, we're happy to have other perspectives in there besides uh, Clay, Julianne, Ben, myself, and Jen. We're trying to involve data managers. We'd like to involve some vendors. Um, and we're quite often asked for, uh, for speakers on topics and we would like to have people who are interested to present. If we ask you to go, certainly we'll cover uh, your expenses to get there. Um, we'll cover your, uh, you know, your incidentals and things, but we can't, uh, 
we can't cover uh, your time. So your time away from your office would have to be up to your company or organization. So uh, as we get a list of places and, and things a little bit more shored up, I will uh, I will make those available and we may reach out and just ask for uh, some folks to present on certain topics. That's all I have unless someone has something for me. Okay, no questions for Eric, then we will go ahead and move on. Thank you very much, Eric. Want to let everybody know about our upcoming events on November 16th and 17th, we have the IHE Path to Production Digital Series going on. And just to let everyone know, there is no public training in December. With that, I'd like to open it up to the open forum. Are there any open forum questions? This is your opportunity to bring up any questions that you've had uh, that we haven't covered here already. Wonderful. Our next upcoming meetings, uh, same bat time, same bat channel, uh, 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the November 23rd call will be short due to the holiday, uh, December uh, and then we also have it coming up on December 14th and December 28th. Uh, with that, as always, um, you can uh, get in touch with us uh, on the website. Use the shiny new um, help ticket uh, button that was demonstrated today. We really appreciate everyone's participation. We know that you're extremely busy and we appreciate you taking time out of your schedules to be with us today. And with that, I think we'll close the meeting and uh, wish everyone a, a safe and happy day. Thank you.